I'm here at the Botanic Garden at OSU looking for monarch butterflies. Um, it's been an interesting year for the monarch migration, especially if you compare it to uh, the past recent years, so uh, perhaps since 2015. Um, so the migration has been late in previous years. Um, uh, warm temperatures in the upper Midwest slowed the migration, so we didn't have monarchs here well into October, um, and the migration kind of trailed out um, and lasted for quite a long time. Uh, this year was different. There were cooler temperatures um, up uh, farther north, and so the migration moved through very quickly. Uh, we have reports of monarchs both to the east, the west, and the south of Stillwater, but we haven't seen very many in Stillwater itself. So usually when we're looking for monarchs, uh, thinking about tagging and, and recording uh, information about the migrants as we look for uh, good conditions. So a lot of times we think about when we have winds coming out of the north, when those shift to coming out of the south, that will kind of stall the migration. And then we'll usually have a lot of monarchs uh, drop down into the area. And it's usually good timing for uh, tagging and uh, weighing and measuring and, and looking at other aspects of the, of the monarch migration. Uh, this year, we've consistently had winds out of the north. Um, and so the monarchs moved through quickly and uh, didn't stop to nectar. So they, they moved by um, higher up. And so uh, we have Usually we're catching well over a thousand monarchs um, each year, and this year um, we're at less than 10. Uh, so I caught number nine today here at the, <laughs> at the Botanic Garden. Um, and so uh, interesting year, but hopefully a good sign for the monarch population um, in terms of them making it to Mexico earlier, um, and then more of them uh, making it through that migration um, and uh, hopefully doing well over the winter, but, but time will tell. I also wanted to provide an update about some of our mowing studies. Um, a lot of people have noticed the signs that we have um, out on 51 where we have uh, mowing plots. Um, I collaborate with uh, Dennis Martin uh, on looking at different mowing regimes and the effect on uh, milkweed plants as well as nectar plants and, and monarchs. Uh, so, and there's starting to be more research coming out in the area of mowing. Um, and so the timing of mowing will influence uh, the regrowth of the milkweed plants as well as other uh, wildflowers. And so what we find is that the monarchs prefer that uh, tender regrowth um, or new growth in some cases. Um, and so they, they do preferentially lay eggs on those, those milkweed plants. Um, in terms of other resources for monarchs, so thinking about nectar plants for the fall migration, uh, the mowing uh, affects different species differently. Uh, so in some cases you might be able to mow um, and then extend the time period in which uh, species might be blooming. So there would be other non-mowed areas. Uh, so for example, in adjacent grassland that would have species that were blooming at kind of the regular time. And then with mowing, you might be able to shift that blooming period a little bit later. So extending the time period that we have good resources available for monarchs. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.